Okay, let's now talk about padding. So padding is a mechanism that allows us to control the output size in addition to choosing the stride. So before we talked about only the simple case of a stride that equals one, and that means if we have an input image and then we have our kernel, then a stride of one means we move one position to the right in, when we do the convolution and also then later one position to the bottom. So we move by one pixel each time, so the whole kernel. We can choose a stride of two, so in that way we move by two pixels each time and this would essentially approximately shrink the size of the output by half. So the output with a stride of two will be approximately only half as large as the input. So the padding is kind of like an opposite to that. It allows us to make the output larger. So let's assume we we have this image here and we have this output, so input and output. So then again, we have our kernel that slides over the image input. Um, the kernel is not really important here um, per se. I mean, it kind of is, but so what we are doing now is we are adding a row if we have a padding of one. This would be padding of one, one on each side. You can also actually uh, control this more finely. You can say one for the top, one for the right side, one for the bottom and one for the left. So we have a padding of one on each side. That means we add one row of pixels on each side. So it's essentially adding another row of pixels. And essentially, usually we set these to zero. So they are usually just zeros. So we are adding in this kind of empty or artificial border around here, which helps us to control the output size. Because now instead of having the kernel like here in the center, the kernel would start actually here, if we have a two by two kernel, for example. And then we, depending on the stride, would uh, either slide by one or two positions to the right. So by that we can kind of make the output slightly larger. Of course, this is like a padding of one. We can also generalize that or have other values like padding of two rows around here. And if you have a non-quadratic image, you can also compensate for that by also making the padding only on the left or the right hand side. So this is like the basic concept behind padding. It's essentially just adding a border around the image. I believe I already showed you this equation last week. This is the equation for computing the output size of a convolutional layer. So um, last time though, we regarded padding as um, p equals zero. So we didn't have any padding. So this term canceled last time. But yeah, now we can consider this equation with a padding that is non-zero. So this whole equation allows us essentially to compute the output size for a given input size. Or in um, particular, if O, the output is the output width, so we can do the same thing with width and height. Um, the same would also apply for the height. We compute it as the input width time, uh, plus two times the padding amount minus the kernel size divided by the stride. And then we are rounding this down. So this is the floor operation. And then we add a one to it. So this is how we compute the output size. So let's take a look at some of the examples of that. Yeah, so there's a relatively nice article called A Guide to Convolution Arithmetic for Deep Learning. Um, so I have some yeah, visualizations from that article here. And we will also revisit this article another time later on when we talk about uh, deconvolution or the so-called transposed convolution in the context of convolutional autoencoders. But for now, let's focus on the regular convolutions. So in the left hand upper corner, I'm showing you an input, a four by four input uh, with a stride of one and no padding resulting in a two by two output when I plug in these values in the previous equation. So there's actually an animation, so you can actually see how it looks like when we do the convolution. So you can see how, yeah, how that works. 
so we just move by one pixel position and there you can see we actually lose one pixel on each side that is because yeah we, we don't go over the edges so in that way um the output will be by two rows and two columns um shorter than the input so in the the next one oh, which one is it or oh, the upper right one so here i have a padding of two and also here so each side has a padding of two and you can see now the kernel slides over the padding as well so the paddings th these are usually just zero so they don't contribute anything to the computation right so uh, when you compute the convolution it's uh, in a way a weighted sum and these are zeros so uh, nothing really happens you don't you don't change any values so what i mean is um when we have this case in the upper left corner only these values contribute because um, these are essentially um, x times w's as well but the x is equal to zero so which kind of doesn't do anything so here in this case it will only focus on on this corner here um yeah and this is how you can then control the output size a little bit so that you don't lose pixels on each side so this is like an extreme case here the output is even bigger than the input um yeah that is also kind of an artifact of the fact that the uh, kernel size is four by four I, why did i pick this uh, particular example that's just because uh, there was an animation for that one usually in practice it's more common to use three by three or five by five kernels um last one uh, left lower corner and this is a uh, stride of two so if you had uh or were unsure how the stride of two works now here's an example so in this case also we get an output of two here the input is five though five by five resulting in an output of two all right so um there are two main terms i briefly wanted to mention in pytorch they are not commonly used it's more like a, i would say a more traditional wording um, it was kind of used in um a tensorflow at least when i used tensorflow back then so there's something called a valid convolution and the same convolution these terms come from uh, more traditional computer vision and a valid convolution means essentially no padding and this can have as a consequence the shrinking feature map so if i go back one slide so um this one here and this one here these would be valid convolutions so that means we're not going over the edge of the input why valid um i don't know why valid but probably it's really referring to the fact that we stay within our boundaries here the other one is called same convolution same convolution means that we usually choose a padding such that the input and the output size are the same so the output size equals the input size on the previous slide i don't have any particular example of a valid uh, sorry of a same convolution i should have maybe added one um, for the same convolution we would have an example where the input size is exactly the same size as the output notice it's not always possible so in this case if we have to have a 4 by 4 kernel it's not possible to maintain this size so if i would have one row of padding um, also even then i wouldn't be able to get the same input size all right um yeah and this is maybe also why um common kernel size conventions are three by three five by five and seven by seven so that you can actually um have a same convolution so how do we um choose padding so that we get same convolution so you can do this by rearranging things so if you for simplicity now ignore the floor operation with a stride so if you only use a stride of one you can cancel that and it simplifies to this form so we just remove the floor and stride and then yeah you can just rearrange that and bring the p to the left hand side the o to the right hand side and then divide by two so we can re rearrange things and um, then we can yeah simplify things we want uh, the input to be the same size as the output right so because we want the input to be the same size of the output we can cancel those so what remains is this one and this one allows us then to choose the stride 
uh, sorry, the kernel size such that we have the same convolution. For instance, if I have a four by four kernel, then I would have one four minus one divided by two, which is an uneven number, so 1.5. So I can see, okay, there's no way I can have um, padding such that I have the same convolution. The only solution, maybe let me clarify, there is actually a solution where you add one uh, row to the bottom, but two rows to the top, for example, that would be one, one solution. But if you want to have a symmetric padding, then there is no good way for that. However, if you use a kernel that is five, you have five minus one um, divided by two, which is four, it's two, right? So in this way you can choose a padding of two. If my kernel size here was um, five, then we would have ended up with a five output. Okay, so this is just, yeah padding in a nutshell. In the next slide or next video, I will talk about spatial dropout and spatial batch norm.